Welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs that sell. And be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because I have another five bonus niches for you. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a version of this design here. This is my listing. I'm on Amazon right now. And this is a pretty simple floral paw print design. It says, all you need is love and a dog. And this is also a very popular kind of style that you would see on Etsy as well. And so I'm gonna show you how we can use Canva's AI generator to create something like this very fast and very easy. This is gonna be a nice quick video for you guys, but you can be very creative in playing with this. So I'm gonna jump right over to Canva. And I've already got a version of this up here that I'm gonna show you guys how you can make. Um, and so what we see here is just a nice floral dog print style. It says, all you need is love and a dog. I put a couple little flourishes there. And what we're gonna do to recreate this is we're gonna use Canva's AI generator. So you would go over to your left-hand side where you see elements, you can click there. And you just scroll down to AI image generator and you generate your own. And then from here, we can put in any prompt we want. And so, if you guys haven't played with this a lot, um, start playing with it. There are tons of things that you can do with it. The sky is really the limit. You just sort of need that idea and then you can go from there. Um, so for this one, I tried several prompts out um, and you know some are better than others and everyone is gonna give you something different and every time you're gonna get something different. Um, so I can't guarantee that what I tell you is going to work the way you want it. But as I scroll down, here are some of the paw prints that I have already made. And so you can see lots of different floral paw prints. And what I went with was this floral paw print made of spring flowers, watercolor style. And so you can take that prompt right there. Oops, I'm just going to go ahead, copy that. And I'm going to paste it over here. And we'll go ahead and hit generate image. Now, again, you can change this however you want. I went with floral and I went with spring flowers, but you could go with winter flowers. I went with watercolor style. You could go with any other style. So lots of different ways you can play with this. And of course, this is a floral paw print. You could do the same thing and make a floral anything else. So it doesn't have to be a paw print. Um, and so I did make a lot of different versions, as you can see, of different floral paw prints. And some of them came out better than others. Some of them, if I didn't specify like watercolor style, I got realistic flowers. Um, if I didn't specify spring flowers, sometimes I got like roses. Or here I got what looks kind of like daisies. Um, and then there's just different styles. Like this one is all encompassed in a, in a solid paw print. This one, you can kind of see it's sort of makes up the shape of a paw print, but there's not like defined edges, which I kind of like a lot versus the defined edges one, but you can do anything you want. And so I encourage you guys to play with this and to try to be, you know, creative with it. Um, and then once you have what you want, you can just always add some text. I don't know why this seems to be taking a little longer than usual. It's usually pretty quick, but right now it seems like it's taken a bit. But anyways, the text that I used right here was one called Back to School. I did get this one off of Creative Fabrica, and this might have been one of the free ones because Creative Fabrica has a ton of free fonts that you can download from Creative Fabrica and upload onto Canva. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a whole video on that on my channel that you guys can check out. Um, but I went ahead and just typed this in, all caps, made the color match the colors in the, the flowers here. And then these, I just added a couple little flourishes here. So I just did a search for like watercolor flowers um, and you can add little flourishes in however you want and just try to make your own style. And again, I don't know why this is taking so long. Usually this is pretty quick. So usually I get, you know, something coming up pretty darn quick. And you can see I've already got a couple here. So like here's one. And I could take this one here while that's still going and I could hit background remover and see what comes up. And the background remover is pretty quick. So there we have a flower and this is more of a defined shape. And so this one looks kind of cool here and you could do something like that again. And there's nothing that would stop you from putting up multiple versions of the same kind of design. So I could put up a whole bunch of these. So if you're on like Amazon merch, obviously depending on what tier you're in, you're gonna put up tons of versions and you're going to put it on every product available. If you're on 
you know, Etsy, you might want to be a little bit more selective. You can make a whole bunch and then just put up like your best or your best couple. Um, it doesn't mean just make one. I encourage you to make a bunch, figure out which one is your favorite and then put your favorite one up if you're doing something like Etsy. Otherwise, if you're on Amazon, throw them all up, right? Um, and that's just my take on that. Okay, this is taking too long. I don't know what is going on here. Let's go ahead and hit cancel. Let's try again. I don't know why that was being real slow. Boom. Okay, so that time it, it went quick. And so that time I got a bunch of different ones. Very cool. So I can add some more pages if I want and play with some of these. So this one I like. This one we can see it's not really defined. You've got flowers that sort of make up the general shape. And so I do kind of like that style. And then of course we've got other ones where it's a little bit more defined. Like this one is a little bit more defined shape. Um, but both of these look real nice. By the way, keep in mind that just because it's on a white background, um, you're still going to need to do a background remover. So if I change the background color on my page to anything else, we can see these still have a white background. So you would still want to remember to do your background remover on both of them. Boom. And one more here. And boom. And so those both look real good. So I could add a page. Let's say I wanted to take this one down and use this one. There it is. I can make it as big as I like. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, but this one looks pretty cool there. And then if I want to add some text, I'm just going to hit T on my keyboard, pull up my text box. I'm going to bring this up here. I'm going to cap. I'm going to put all you need is love, right? And then I can go ahead. Um, I can hit control D and just duplicate it. That's an easy way to copy it. Put down here and then put and and I can do that in all caps too, and a dog, right? And then we can pick whatever font we want. Again, you know, you can pick any font right here. This is the back to school font that I used on that one, but there are a ton of fun fonts that you can use. I mean, I just went right away, but you could also do cursive ones too. I did this more, you know, in all caps, so you can play with how that looks. So that's a little bit bolder there. Obviously, there's just a whole bunch that you could play with and you could go through and, you know, spend forever on fonts. I sometimes spend a long time on fonts, but, you know, you can do something like that. I went to effects and then I did a little curve on it, um, you know, and so you can curve it however much you want. I brought that up. I want the color to kind of match. So I go over to color and I can pick any of the colors in here that I think might look good. You know, so maybe that red or kind of pinkish color looks pretty good. And the dog here, I can go ahead and again, I can do the same font there. Blow that up a little bit. Bring that down towards the bottom here. Again, I can make that sort of that same reddish color there. And so you can kind of see how the design is coming together. And then if I wanted to add any flourishes, I can definitely do that. So I could definitely go up to, well, let's just say back to elements and I could put like flourishes and go to graphics and see if there's any kind of like flourish style things that I like, you know, and so some of like little lines that might look cute. Um, and you can make those kind of look however you wanted to. If you wanted to do flourishes, I could go with just watercolor flowers and see if there's any watercolor flowers that I might want to like just sort of add in that look like they go okay. Um, and I mean, I kind of did something like this, just pulled up a flower, shrunk it way down and sort of just use it to kind of border the frame here. This isn't a good example, but that's kind of what I did is just put one on each side and you can just sort of start playing and putting things wherever you want to kind of, you know, finish up your design and make it look kind of all incorporated there. You can do, you do want to make sure that it's a similar style, but, you know, I could add little flowers here and there and stuff like that. So anyways, you can play with it. Obviously, I could spend a lot of time playing with this design and really coming up with different things. That is for you guys to do. I want you guys to be as creative as you want. And of course, I want you to have fun designing these things too. So if you're not having fun with this, then you're doing something wrong because it should be fun. It should, you know, be creative. You should be able to, you know, do your own artwork and make it original. 
and then, you know, obviously put it up and hope for some sales because, hey, we're all doing this because we also want some money, but, you know, um, be creative there too. If you have questions about this, drop it in the comments section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. If you have video requests, you can put those in the comments section below. I'll try to get you added to my list. Um, again, if you're brand new to print on demand, I do have a print on demand beginner's guide that I sell on my Etsy shop for like 20 bucks. Um, I wanted to make sure that anybody who wanted it could actually afford it. So um, as opposed to some of those like thousand dollar courses that you see. Um, and because you guys were so patient and you did wait until the end of the video, I do have another five bonus niches for you. So without any more waiting, these are your five bonus niches. So I went ahead this time and went with axolotl niches. And so number one, relax a lot. Number two, I ask a lot of axolotl questions. Number three, snacks a lot. Number four, games a lot. And number five, reads a lot. And so you can see how you could go ahead and keep scaling that out and being as creative as you want with that. Um, so axolotls are very popular. Again, I don't know why, but this is a kind of trending animal. So be as creative as you want with the axolotl designs. And you can go ahead and do some cross niching. I've seen them done in Christmas designs, Halloween designs, reading designs, eating designs, anything that you can think of, mix it with an axolotl and there, boom, cross niche. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing really well with your sales. I hope you're being creative. I hope you're continuing to learn new skills and grow your portfolio. And I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.